Morning friends. Just going on a little road trip to the city to run some errands. Here's the here's the Canadian prairie in winter. Just got you mounted to the dash here. It looks like a lake of ice. Love it. We've had beautiful weather. It is minus three Celsius. Um, just below freezing. And uh, the long-term forecast is saying more and more of the same. So it's, uh, I'll take it. Normally this time of the year, it's well below zero and uh, it's tough going. Burn a lot of firewood this time of the year. Anyhow, when we get home and back to the shop, let's do some saw work. Okay, friends, we're, uh, we're putting this Mac together. All kinds of good RTV on the muffler. Muffler was leaking bad. Um, this is one of them turd saws. This is what we do here. Let's see what we can do. And uh, I got my handle completely prepped, cleaned up. This mount's a little questionable, but I think I have mounts coming with some other parts. So we can always go in and change that later. I got this all dressed up. I'm going to put a little bit of silicone, our NG, engine assembly silicone, around this flange because I don't trust it. Um, makes it a little worse when you pull the saw apart, but if we can, if we can stop an air leak or five, uh, I want to do it. Air leaks, air leaks are a nightmare, and uh, <laughs> you guys know the deal there. Air leaks, air leaks take a good build and make it not fun, so. Okay, try and keep it out of the motor. I'm going to be fairly liberal with this stuff. And uh, you should be good. I'm going to put just a smidge on this side, just so they bond well. This flange was very, very corroded. I'm surprised this saw around. It's probably why it was so hard to start. Um, the rings weren't stuck, but uh, I have a feeling this thing had many, many air leaks. I didn't run it enough to to figure out the air leaks or to find them. Okay. One more thing. I'm going to put a little sealant around this bolt where it goes through the oil tank. Because I have a feeling that would be a spot for an oil tank leak. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what parts I'm missing. I've looked at the IPLs. Uh, I think this thing's mostly complete, but uh, a few things seem a little off. Okay, so we got the front mount. Rear mount is already attached, which I think I should have done that after. <laughs> See, guys, it uh, it never ends with this build for me. I'm learning, and I'm willing to learn on video. Okay, I'm going to detach this mount and I'll hit you guys back up in a second. Okay, we're working quick because we want to, we don't want to let this, uh, we don't want to let this mount. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll use this bolt. This thing's been apart a million times, I can tell. There's mismatched bolts, fasteners, screws. So... She's not a showpiece, that's for sure. Uh, if there's a McCullough uh, Tour de la Gance or whatever they call that, um, this one's not going to be eligible for that show. This is going to be a Sunday morning cutting firewood kind of ripping saw. It should be fast. Should. Again, I don't know what this saw is going to do, guys. We'll... Uh, We'll do the best we can. That's all you can do in your build. Do the best that you can and uh, go from there. Okay. So, we'll put this mount on here. Now, if I remember correctly, I gotta fit this rear mount in. I don't know if I've said this, these are not easy saws to put together. Not for me anyways. You Mac guys, maybe you've done this a bazillion times, but for me, uh, everything about this design is counterintuitive. 
Okay. We got our flange in there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to screw the flange down. See if I can get you guys right in here. I'll try not to bump the camera. Let's cinch this down. No promises. Okay. Put this one here. This is fun doing this on film for you guys. Why not? We'll work on anything here. Because uh, that's just how I am. If I work on the same thing too much, I get bored. And hobbies should never... Hobbies should never be boring, in my opinion. If they're boring, you're doing something wrong. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that makes you excited to get up on a Saturday. At least it is for me. Okay. These are mismatched screws. Um, seems to be the, the, the tail of this saw. Again, we're hoping this thing doesn't have any air leaks. Uh, these are a saw... But definitely, there's a lot of places that you can get an air leak in these, like a lot. Um, so if you're working on one of these, you're best off just to replace as much of the air leak parts as possible. Or seal them like I'm doing, or, you know, new gaskets. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get these lined up here. Here's one. I find I have a hard time getting my hands in various locations on this saw, too. Okay, this one's a little bit... There, hopefully you guys can see here. No, you can't. There you guys go. Sorry for that, I should be looking at the camera. Hopefully the beginning of this video you actually got to see something. Yeah, see, I can't get my finger in there. <laughs> I can't get the bolts started. These are fun, though. Uh, I like the way they look, too. Um, black and yellow is good. I am a DeWalt man at work, so... Um, okay. I need to push this over. I'm just going underneath with a screwdriver. This mounts a little... A little crooked okay there we go oh. sorry if you guys can't see what i'm doing uh, sometimes i gotta be able to see <laughs> there we go i think we got her yeah we got her wicked okay a bunch of small victories make a big victory now i'm wondering <laughs> That heat shieldy thingy, can I get that on now? Oh, I see. Yeah, see, I'm gonna have to pull this apart again, guys. <laughs> Here, struggle along with the tin man. Again, I've never worked on one of these, and uh, I am not familiar with the sequence of events when I'm putting this saw together. And I keep forgetting, because I actually, I actually um, test fitted this a little bit just to, <clears throat> just to see where my potential problem spots were. And uh, size do we need here five sixteenths and uh i keep putting it together kind of backwards i'm going to pause you guys here and grab a five sixteen so yeah i keep uh i keep bumbling with these saws they're they're definitely they're not wrong i mean they're not wrong they're just different and uh I'll learn them. Home lights are no walk in the park. Oh, I bumped you guys. Home lights are no walk in the park either, so. Okay, I'm going to keep fighting with this. I'll hit you guys back up, just in the name of time.
Okay. <laughs> Note to self, do not forget heat shield. Like I always say guys, if you can't laugh at yourself, you can't laugh at anybody. Okay, back to the program. Uh, I had to clean everything off, all the gasket material I made, all that, all the assembly silicone I put on, I had to get rid of all that and uh, start over again. So that was, that was something. Okay. There we go. I find these AV mounts are a little tricky. Maybe when they're new they're not so bad, but... Okay. That one's in. Drop something on the floor. <laughs> I put the harder one on this side. I flipped that mount around because I figured you guys might be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better this time. Get rid of this, making a big mess. Okay, so we got that in. Mount this intake flange down. I'll show you guys all this. I just want to get this cinched down before my uh, assembly silicone sets up. You got to work fairly quick with this stuff. I usually don't like to let it skin. And I believe with this moto seal it says not to let it skin. So skinning is when you let it dry. Um, some gasket maker uh, it says to let it skin which lets it dry just a little bit you know sometimes it's five or ten minutes and uh, let it dry I'm just gonna stick my finger in there get rid of any gasket maker that's pushed its way out we don't want any obstructions in this saw we want that air to get right in there there you go so two flange screws and uh, your two mount screws. Now we go to the front, right here, like this. And there's a nut. There's a nut and a washer here somewhere. I think it's actually this one. There we go. Screw this down. Break out the old shovel head wrench. Might have to start calling this the chainsaw wrench because uh, it's assembled many a chainsaw now. Let me grab another, grab another 716s here. There we go. I'm starting to figure out the order of operations for these. Um, I did a test fit just after I was done porting the saw, just just putting it together. I wasn't like trying to, you know, figure out the order of operations, but there we go. There's that. Okay. Now, impulse line is right here. I did put a little bit of silicone on there. There you go, impulse line. Okay, just give me a few minutes guys, I'm gonna button up a few things. Okay, let's put the clutch on. If I can get my hands on it. Just a couple of shims. Bearings already pre-greased. So 
sorry, sprocket. Sprocket's not in too bad a shape on this saw. That's a good thing. This saw must have been by the coast somewhere. It's uh, she's got a lot of rust. This is on a taper. Okay. We're getting there, aren't we? We almost have a power saw. Now this is reverse thread, so we're gonna put we're gonna put our piece of rope in there again, like we've been doing. Gonna grab the rope, folks. Put the rope in here. Spin it backwards till it hits. There we go. Make sure this one's tight because this this saw does not have a chain break. So I've, I've mentioned it before. Make sure your clutch is tight, especially if you don't have a chain break. There we go. We have a clutch. Okay, I want to put this bottom handle on here. Okay, we got a big old bolt and there's a shim. A piece of rubber on it. Riveting video, I know guys. <laughs> okay. check for fitment here okay we're good nice thing about this power saw is everything is standard so if I need to replace anything I've just been grabbing from my parts from my nuts and bolts there's nothing super uh, you know there's no like not no, but there's not a lot of proprietary fasteners on this saw, which makes it a little bit easier. Okay, oh, I believe there was a nut at the back here or a screw. Okay, I'm going to hit you guys back up. We almost have a power saw. Okay, I'm just fastening up the recoil. I have, uh, I have new recoil screws in the house actually. Um, I'll have to grab them after. I'll put these two in for now and that should hold it for what we need. Oh, that sounds healthy. <laughs> Everything's loose on this saw. Everything. So, I wonder what these are. Let's see if I have all these. Hold on a second, friends. Okay, I had another bolt, but uh, the bolt is actually broken off into the recoil housing. So we'll have to, that'll be a job for a later day. Maybe even rebuild this recoil. Basically, I just want to get this thing running and see. Okay. So what's left? Spark plug? Oh, would you look at that? We got a brand new one right here. Let's see if I can get this stuck in the right place. Just got to check for spark. Which, with the kind of luck I'm having with this saw, will have none. <laughs> oh yeah, we got spark. I can see it. Yep, we're good. Okay. Well, let's put the spark plug in then. Might as well. We're getting there. Just got to put the carby on. And, uh... Just got to basically put the carb on. We can fire this thing. Put a little fuel in it. Not much. I'm just going to put a, a little drink down there.
There we go. Oh, yeah, we got compression. Okay. Okay, folks, I'm going to button this thing up and uh, put the carb on. Turn it upside down, there's not that much gas in it. Hold on. Super Pro 70 ported, tin manized. This thing feels good already. I'm gonna heat cycle it a few more times. Next time you guys see this, I'll bar it up. Uh, I still have to test the oil pump and make a plate. Uh, there's no guide plate here, and uh, chain adjuster's missing. Well, there you guys go. Another first on tin man saws. Take her easy.